Hi everyone, just doing a quick video from bed today because I'm not well. Um, so I just thought I'd speak about my weekend. So it all started Friday night, uh, we went to an engagement party, me, James and the kids. My cousin got engaged and um, she has children and like a lot of our family have young children so it's a child friendly engagement party and uh so we all went and it it was lovely night it's really nice seeing people a lot of my family i haven't seen for years because you know we've all everyone's been poorly and then covid and chronic illnesses and all of that so there's been sort of limits but it's really nice seeing everyone and, and the party was lovely and yeah, it was really, really good. Um, on the way home from the party, Alex said that he had a bit of an earache and he didn't feel very well. Um, we thought he was probably just tired, had a bit of excitement, there was loud music. Anyway, he proceeded to be up all night with an earache, gave him some medication, gave him some cowpaw. And uh, I stayed with him for a few hours. Then James, well, we swapped through the night. We took it in turns to sit up with him. And he didn't sleep all night. He must have got about an hour, if that. Um, and then yesterday morning, I was checking him over again because he said his ear was really hurting again. I had a look and his ear was draining. There was fluid draining from his ear. Um, well, his brother has had an ear infection the week before. It's already on antibiotics for it. So I phoned the out-of-hours doctor and said, oh, I think my son's got an ear infection. Can I please have an out-of-hours appointment? So we went to the out-of-hours doctors and they checked him over and prescribed him some amoxicillin so on the way to the doctors Alex was sick and we thought oh he gets travel sick so we thought it was that um the doctor checked him over gave him the antibiotics got home and Alex proceeded to be sick for the rest of the day didn't keep any of his antibiotics down um didn't keep anything down not even water so I phoned out of hours again and said I'm a little bit concerned because he's now vomiting so much he's not keeping anything down so the out of hours doctor rang us and said uh, you need to take him to A&E because he's going to need IV fluids and IV medication to get it in his system so pack an overnight bag for you and him because he, he will be staying in they'll be expecting you she wrote up all this um, paperwork and sent it to A&E before we got there James's mum took us there and as soon as we got into A and E, so he's been he's been ill all day, been being sick, kept nothing in. Get into A and E, and he perks right up. He's getting back to his normal self. So whatever was causing the problem had obviously gotten out of his system by then. Um, he saw the paediatric nurse, and he did a water challenge, a fluid challenge. So we had to give him five mils of fluid every five minutes for half an hour. And then see if he kept it down. And he did, you know, and he was acting like he started acting like his usual self. And I was like, honestly, he's been poorly all day. Um, sort of typical. But it's uh, that's not uncommon for children to go to a new place, go to the doctors and perk up and then go back downhill again. So anyway, the um A and E doctor checked him over and everything and said, It's okay. <coughs> Sorry. It's okay. Um, he'll be okay. He can go home, start again with his antibiotics in the morning, give him slow fluids and see how he goes. If he has another day being sick, then bring him back. But so he, we brought him home. Oh, and check on him regularly, obviously. We brought him home last night and he went straight to sleep. I checked on him every half an hour through the night to make sure he was okay. And he was, and he's got up this morning and he's absolutely fine. He's had his meds, had breakfast, had drink, kept it all down. He's playing on the Xbox. He's playing around. He's being fine. I'll come back in a second. Sorry about that. Um, 
yeah, so he seems absolutely fine today. Uh, James is fine. Everyone else is fine. The kids are all fine. Um, but James has sent me back to bed. Because I'm at the beginning of what I think is a flare-up. And what, what James is adamant is a flare-up. And I'm not feeling very well. And I'm very tired. I'm going to move that. Because all those boxes over there. It's my books. There's a big pile of books everywhere. Um... So yeah, um, my flare-ups usually start with cold and flu symptoms and then I find it hard to walk, uh, find it hard to think, find it hard to do pretty much anything and we have found that I'm able to not have so much of a flare-up if when it, re when it first starts I have a lay down and I rest for a day. That usually avoids big flare-ups. When I first... When all this first started happening, um, I would just try and push through it because I didn't realise what was happening. I hadn't been like assessed or anything. I just thought I would just feel a bit rough. It's fine, I'll just get on with it, um, as you do. And long story short, I ended up not being able to do hardly anything for about a year. And then I got assessed and they diagnosed me with um, CFSME long covid everyone i've seen has called it something different um but it all comes under the same same thing and it's all treated the same way which is by pacing and resting whenever you feel like you need to so um over because this started in 2021 the end of 2021 i got covid really bad and it I was ill in bed for 10 days and I've not, been, I've not been right since. I've not been right since then. So, um, I, that whole year, all through, like from December, 2021 till December, 2022, I was not well. I was really not well. I had a lot of time off work. I had I went through so many tests and everything and we said, oh, we think it might be this, we think it might be that, we think it might be this. And basically they've ruled everything out and said, right, this is what we're left with. So I saw a specialist who then formally diagnosed me. Um, although my brain still doesn't believe me. My brain is just like, no, you're just being lazy, which is quite hard to deal with. Um... But yeah, so I saw the specialist and she said about pacing. So I had to do a diary, an energy thing, and then work out what I can do, what I can't do on certain days and go from there. So I had a, a year sort of working that out and I and I managed to do, I had uh, about eight months flare up free. I was fine for eight months. I paced myself. I was careful. If I started feeling a little bit too tired, I would make sure I rest um I started working from home which really helped as well and then at the end of the year I'd been flare-up free for, for a long time so we thought I can go back to work work you know um because working doing the work from home isn't it's not really earning very much obviously because I'm only one person I can only do so much but um so we decided I could go back to work and I did I did tell the employer about it and I said, but I've been flare up free for a while. The doctor said it's OK, you know, ran it by the doctor. Would it be OK? And all of this. And it was all agreed as long as I didn't overdo it. Um, I then proceeded to start working from nine till nine, four days a week. So. Um, but you don't get paid for the full money because I'm working in home care. You only get paid for the time you're in the people's houses. And I'm a walker, so I was walking in between. And obviously you get, like, breaks and that. So I'd get an hour or so break and come home. And anyway, long story short, I, I was doing that from sort of November 2023. And we've got to May 2024. And I've I've now been off work for about a month, 
excuse me, that part of this, this is why we think I've got a flare up coming because it starts with congestion and cold and flu symptoms, then it just wipes me out. But I haven't got cold or flu, I haven't got cold, I haven't got flu, I haven't got fever, anything like that. This is just what happens when I get into a flare up. So I've been off for about a month with other things. So I had severe abdominal pain and uh, an issue with uh, my periods and things like that. So I've had scans and that and they found cysts. A cluster of cysts which is causing the problem so they've signed me off because of the pain and the issues and that i can't can't i can't walk for massive periods of time because it hurts too much and everything and i've got to wait for a second scan to see if the cyst gets smaller or bigger and then i might have to have an operation so they've kept me off for that um while i've been off i've sort of been working from home again doing other stuff that isn't physical you know it's the physical stuff that I am really struggling with at the minute and it's it's really frustrating like it's really really frustrating because you've got this mental battle between oh you're just being a big baby or you're just you're just being lazy like and the other side of no there is actually something wrong you've the doctor's advised rest but on top of that you're having a flare-up so it is just it's it's a whole load of frustrating a whole load of not really knowing properly what's going on which is what what is causing which and and all of this stuff um so yeah some days are going to look like this and some days are going to look quite normal it's not really something i talk about a lot and i tend not to do any videos when i'm having flare ups and that because it's not it's not pleasant but got to be realistic about it haven't we this is what my life looks like sometimes um so yeah everyone's fine i'm just I've, i'm wiped from a couple of days of no sleep and it's sort of triggered a flare and i and i, I know i i know it's a flare up as well because i hurt my whole body hurts when I'm walking, I feel like I'm wading through like syrup or treacle, like my legs don't move properly and I'm getting like sort of dizziness and constant nausea, which is a part of what I have with my symptoms. I get a lot of nausea, I get a lot of dizziness, I get a lot of pain, um, I get a lot of brain fog as well, but that's that side of it's not too bad today. I have days where I can't get my words out or I do the wrong words and I know I'm saying the wrong words but I cannot think of the right words um so yeah today sort of because I'm starting to get the feeling and the, and the syrupy walking and, and the dizziness and all of that James has said no you go back to bed you stay there for a few hours and see how you feel in a few hours um You know, he's really good. I don't know what I'd do without him. He's he's amazing. He doesn't moan, he doesn't complain. He just deals with it. I don't know how else to put it. So yeah, this is this is what I'm doing today. Most of my day is probably gonna look like this. I'm gonna try and read if I can. So I'm hoping if I can read, I'm gonna finish um this uh if i can't i can't we just have to see what happens but such is life and don't really want to complain i just thought i'd pop on and hopefully having this bit of rest will sort of stave off a flare up i hope and allow me to get on with things next week sort of having to make the decision about whether I'd be well enough to go back to the job that I was doing or if I need to find a job where I can be that requires a bit less of me physically so that I don't keep having these flare-ups and things because it got to the point 
uh, before I got signed off with the other issues that are going on, which mean I can't, I'm limited on what I can do there as well. It's, it's, it's really frustrating. There's no, no other way to put it. It's frustrating and there's pressure and you, it's pressure to get back to normal and get on with things and be fine and, and it's just not happening and, and I hate it. Um, but what was I saying? I was sort of having to discuss whether I'm well enough to go back and do such a physical job, you know, and I'm not being funny, care work as well. You need to be able to be reliable and be well all the time to look after people. And I don't want to let anyone down. It's been hard enough being off at the minute. It's been hard enough with everything. It was getting to the point that on my days off, I was sleeping the entire day away because I couldn't do anything. So also I need to, I need to be there for my children and I can't, at the minute it feels like I can't do both. I can't go out and work full time and be a mum full time and I don't want to let my children down. So we're sort of, we're having to have discussions about what to do, whether I should go back to just working from home all the time so that I've got enough energy physically to do things with the children and that because, you know, they're my kids and I want to be spending time with them. I don't want to be stuck up here like this. I don't want to be like that. And on my good days, yeah, it's great. I can do everything. But on bad days with flare-ups, it's it's horrible. I mean, like, today James is going to take the twins out with his mum this afternoon. Alex is obviously going to stay at home with me because he's been poorly and I really do not want him to overdo it and have a setback because, you know, yesterday he was really poorly, so he is resting today as well. So I think when James takes the kids out, me and Alex will probably watch a, a film or play on the Xbox together. And that's so we still we're still getting some time, quality time together. Um but it's the frustration and and the fact that you feel like you're failing all the time when with it because you you want to be I want to be one of those mums that can go play football with the kids I want to be one of those mums that can go to the like theme parks and go out and do that all the time and have limitless energy and do all that like I used to be before I got sick we used to go out all the time we'd go to the zoo we'd go to the park we'd go on massive walks we'd go we'd do lots of fun things all the time but it's sort of, we have to limit that now because I don't have as much energy. And I hate it. I hate it. Because you have to sort of pick and choose what you can and can't do. Um, sometimes that does mean that the kids go out with James and other members of, of our family, like my mum or his mum, um, and do stuff with them. And I have to stay at home sometimes, not all the time. Other times... I come out with them and I can do it. And every day is is very different. And I had got to the point where I was quite stable and would do like last summer, for example, we'd done a couple of days out a week, every week for the entirety of the summer. And that was great because then the following day we all stayed in and we rested and that because the kids were just as tired and it gave me a chance to recharge my batteries and everything like that. But I really don't, I really want to be able to do that again this year and I'm so scared that I'm not going to be able to. So I'm hoping that, so obviously if I do have to have an operation, the operation that they're talking about being a, just being a possibility, just very much depends on what's going on. I am going to be recovering for 12 weeks, which will be the summer holidays and then some. So... It is worrying and it is scary and like I usually don't post things like this on here. But I need to be honest because not every day is great. Anyway, I'm going to stop there because this video is getting quite long and I didn't want it to be a long one. And I will hopefully be back at some point during the week with a, with a nice happy knitting crochet book vlog. Okay, so take care, stay safe, bye.